According to a recent study, people hey, are... Hey, Amber. What's up, Terry? Can I ask you some advice? Sure. How do you deal with anger? Like, I feel like 2020 makes me feel so overwhelmingly angry that sometimes I don't know what to do with all of my anger. Well, I've been doing this thing where I focus all my anger on a trivial thing in the past. Does it work? Yeah. Let me show you right now in a segment called Being Mad Like It's 1999. Ooh. This is Lonnie. I think about her a lot. She didn't deserve what happened to her, and I'm still mad about it. In 1999, she was the subject of City High's hit song, What Would You Do? You know it. It's the song that goes, what would you do if this was at home? Blah, 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 blah. It was very popular. City High is a group made up of Claudette Ortiz, Robbie Pardlow, and Ryan Toby. Fun fact, Ryan Toby was the little black boy who sings Joyful Joyful in Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. The song is supposed to be a motivational anthem for single parents who are dealing with poverty, but it's really just a song shaming a sex worker for simply taking off her rope, which is exactly what the kids in Sister Act 2 were asked to do for their final performance. Your teacher says take off your robes. Hell oh, take yeah. off your robes. Do it quickly, come on. I don't know, just take off your robes. You remember that movie? Friggin' loved it. <laughs> in the first verse, the men of City High attend a party with strippers, one of whom is their former classmate, Lonnie. They then proceed to take her outside and berate her for her life choices. Now, the idea of a person I haven't seen in a decade giving me their unsolicited opinion on my life choices is grounds for, at the very least, a bitch who are you talking to, plus a dick punch. Amber, doesn't that seem a little harsh? My aggressive feelings for this fictional song from 1999? Absolutely. That's the point. So then, of course, Lonnie defends herself, informing them that she's a single mother taking care of a child alone because her baby father is an addict who is in and out of jail, which is like, yes, we love a problem-solving black queen doing what she can to survive. How did they respond? They said, and I quote, girl, you ain't the only one with a baby. That's no excuse to be living all crazy. Ah, uh, yes. It's working. I feel the anger transferring because what the hell kind of response is that? She then admits that she has been struggling with suicidal thoughts due to past trauma from having to flee her home with her sister at a young age due to their father's sexual abuse. Okay, okay. I, I see why Dick Punch was the very least, but I'm sure after that they emphasized. Oh, that's cute that you think that. Knowing that information, when asked again by Lonnie, what would you do, they let her know they would, and I quote, get up on my feet and stop making tired excuses. Girl, I know if my mother could do it, baby, you could do it. And it's like, can I speak to your mother? Because she needs to beat y'all asses. If you actually want to help, don't lecture her. Tip her more money, you broke. Bitch, my 2020 brain knows sex workers work, period, and sex workers shouldn't be shamed and degraded. They should be protected. And despite my 2020 brain fully believing that, my 1999 brain is still like, damn, this is a great song. Remember that song? Yeah. What would you do if it's always at home? Crying all alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry. Tarek and Amber went on to sing the complete song. However... That would have been too expensive to air, and frankly, it did not sound great. So, we will fast forward to two full minutes later. So for you, this is just a good time, but for me, this is what, what I, I call, call life. life. Mm. And that is how you be mad like it's 1999.